So what is advanced reporting? Advanced reporting is a new module, relatively new module, that was added to QuickBooks Enterprise by Intuit a few years ago. Advanced reporting can be accessed by clicking on reports and advanced reporting. Now you must be on version QuickBooks Enterprise 15, 16, or above for this to work. If you're not 100% sure what version of QuickBooks you have, or whether or not you have <clears throat> QuickBooks Enterprise 15 or 16 or above, go ahead and call me or email me, and I may be able to help you through that. Now, the other really important thing is you must have an active service plan or subscription with QuickBooks Enterprise. So you must be paying the annual fee through Intuit uh, to have this. Now, if you all have QuickBooks open and you hit Control-1 on your keyboard, you should be able to know exactly what version you have, a year version, whether it's Pro, Premier, Accountant, Enterprise, and the release. So that's really helpful as well. Um, also, here's your license code, because if you do reach out to me to ask me about what version of QuickBooks Enterprise you have, or whether or not you have an active subscription, I may ask you for that so I can research through into it. Anyway, when I click on reports, advanced reporting, this window pops up. Now, this is very different than QuickBooks. This is not a built-in function. This is a separate function. It's a completely separate function from QuickBooks. And the look and feel is entirely different. Um, and it doesn't behave the same way. Now, the good news is it uses the exact same data set that's in your QuickBooks file. So it is going to build reports essentially from the data that's in QuickBooks, but it's going to have a completely look and feel. Now, I really love this tool. This tool has been a game changer. I have implemented it with a lot of my clients, and also I have built a lot of custom reports for people all over the world that have emailed me and asked me for a specific set of reports that they need. Now, if, um, if you are sent a report via email by myself or another QuickBooks Advanced Reporting Consultant. The way you load that report is by clicking on Reports, Import, and then you would have that report presumably in your email, and then you would save it somewhere in your computer. And here I have a bunch of reports here. And I click the report, in this case that I want to import, I hit Open, and then basically it's going to load up the report in QuickBooks Advanced Reporting, and it's also going to load it up and add it into uh, your default reports that you can pull. So if I click here where it says report list, I'm going to have a whole bunch of reports. In this case, all the reports are built in. All these that have this little dollar sign, the green dollar sign on it, uh, not dollar sign, but it has an S. These are the starter reports. These are the ones that already come with QuickBooks, advanced reporting, and all these other ones that don't have the little S um, are the new custom reports that were built. So then you, you, you would just double click on whatever custom report you had built. So you would just select the advanced report that was just imported, double click on that, and then the report that was previously built will show up. Now, getting started with advanced reporting could be very intimidating. I, I know it, it did take me a couple of days to get accustomed to this. However, I really, really, really like it because it, it has uh, powerful capabilities like in Excel, uh, you can do uh, pivot tables, you can do graphs, you can do really interesting things. Let me show you a couple of the really neat things you can do with advanced reporting. All right, so I'm going to go into reports and new. So I'm just going to start with a blank canvas here. And then we're going to build the report from scratch. We're going to, we're going to keep it really simple and then we're going to progressively add more stuff to it. The first, very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click here on current selection. Basically what that would do is blank out my canvas and keep a log of all the filters that I've um, clicking on as I narrow down the information. Now I'm going to right click anywhere in the blank canvas here. I'm going to right click, click on new sheet object and click on chart. Now this is the heart of advanced reporting. This is how we get started with most of our reports. Most of the reports that I'm customizing for my clients and most of the reports that you are looking for are probably going to be uh, something called a pivot chart. So I'm going to click on this icon here. Right? And this is the pivot chart icon. This says that this is not an actual graphical chart. This is actually a table of data. But with pivots, 
you can expand and collapse information. Now up here under title, I'm just going to give it a title. We'll just call it here sales. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on next. So uh, the next thing that is asking you for is the dimensions. Now think of dimensions as the rows or the columns, mostly the rows. So think of the rows and the columns in which uh, the data is going to be grouped by or organized by. So let's say, for example, I want to see uh, in dimensions, I want to see first uh, transaction type. So I want to see if it's an invoice or a bill or something like that. Then I want to see, let's say, my customer's name. Then I want to see uh, the item that it was used uh, and then the amount. Okay, so we'll start with that. So let's say we're looking for those four dimensions, transaction type, customer name, uh, and the item. I think those are transaction type, customer name, and the item. So I'm going to start with the transaction type, and that's going to be inside of the transactions table. Now, if, when you first look at this, this could be like, wow, very overwhelming. Now, keep in mind that there are about 1,300 different fields that we can pull from QuickBooks. So there's, there's just a lot of data that advanced uh, reporting can pull. So it, yes, it could feel intimidating and that's normal, that's that's okay. And it, it needs to be because it's, it's very powerful. So we're gonna start with the transactions table and trust me, most of the stuff we're looking for, it's in the transactions table. And then we're gonna go down and look for all the different fields. So we're gonna look for something called uh, transaction type right here. And that's basically going to be our first dimension. We'll click there, transaction type. We'll click add. So that's going to be our first dimension. It's okay, transaction type. The next thing is going to be, let's say, customer name. So we're going to go up, come up here and we're going to look for transactions, customer name. Now, the nice thing about this is this is, it looks like code, but it's still plain English. And, um, and it is very familiar with uh, QuickBooks terms too. So we got transaction type, customer name. Let's also, let's, let's look for date, transaction date. So let's look for transactions and then we'll look for transaction state this one you kind of gonna have to learn this one this is txn date so we'll bring that one in okay, so now we have transaction type customer name then we have transaction date and we also said we're going to bring in the transaction item transaction item so we're going to look for transactions and then we're going to go up to transaction item full name there we go and then we'll click on add so these are going to be our dimensions uh, from the perspective of rows now we're also going to put our dimensions from the perspective of columns here but i'll add that afterwards okay just to kind of simplify we'll start with just the rows and then we'll deal with columns afterwards so i'm going to go ahead and click on next and the next thing that is asking me this little thing pops up here i'm going to go ahead and close it just to kind of show you next thing is asking me if, is for the expressions so, so the expressions is the actual data inside the pivot table, the actual um, amount, the transaction dollar amount, transaction quantity, the type of things that we want to display and calculate as a result of the rows and the columns that we're pivoting. So let's say at this particular time, we're looking for total dollar amount. So we're gonna go ahead and click on add. And similar to dimensions, we are going to look for uh, the data inside of a table so we're going to go down to the transactions table there we go the transactions table and then we're going to hit the drop down and look for the field that we want to calculate so in this particular case we're going to look for the transaction amount so that's just going to that's going to give me the total amount inside the transaction and then uh, we're going to go ahead hit paste that will bring in that piece of code up here uh, and it's letting us know uh, what's going to be. Now, because this is a pivot that we want to add up multiple transactions, we just have to insert this Excel type of code here. We're just gonna say sum, and we're telling it, listen, you know, when you pull up the transaction amount, add it up because this is going to be pivoted and grouped and summarized. So what the sum does is allows it to add up all the transactions, uh, um, in this case, transaction amount, under that particular line. So we're gonna go ahead and hit OK, and then we're gonna go ahead and hit uh, Finish. So that will get started with basically a, a basic table. And in this particular case, uh, let me, I'm gonna hit Properties here, and I'll make the font bigger. Um, you know, normally when we want a lot of data, we wouldn't do that. But for this particular case, for the video purposes, I think it's better to have bigger font. So I'll just make the font, you know, overall bigger here, that just, just to make it easier for us to, 
to, to build a, a report here that we can read. Okay, so there's a, there's a, all my transactions here and I have them in this case by transaction type. Now I can filter these by coming here on the left side where it says list box. And then I can pull a uh, transaction type right here. And I'm going to go ahead and double click and that's going to create a new box. And that new box allows me to say, you know, only show me transactions. Let me make this box bigger of a particular transaction type. So I'm going to say, I only want to do invoices. So I'll click on invoice. And then I also only want to show, uh, let's say, sales receipts, which in this case, there isn't any, the QuickBooks file must not have any. So then we're narrowed down to just invoices. Now, let me make, just make this font a little bit smaller. I think I'll make it way too big. We'll make it 12. I think that should be perfect. Okay, there we go. Now, this is all pivoted. This is all compressed. So this is a, you know, this total dollar amount inside invoices. Um, it's just one single box. But if I click on that little tiny plus sign, I'm going to go ahead and expand. And I'm going to go to the next layer, which is, you know, we had, we had the invoice. And then in this case, we're going to have... Uh, customer name, see that customer name. Okay, and then on each of these, I can I can expand the specific one I wanna see. Let's say I wanna expand here, Albert Cruz, and then the, the report expands a little bit more. And now this is grouped by date, because that's how, what we set. We set transaction type, customer name, then the date, and then the dollar amount. And then I can expand any of these in particular. I'll just scroll this to the right. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. Uh, side box here so we can see more information. So now we're seeing, okay, we're seeing on invoices for this particular customer on this particular date, we're seeing all the dollar amounts um, having to do with this invoice. Now this, this is going to add up all the numbers. So we are also going to have to bring a filter to say, listen, I just want to see the sales portion of it, right? Uh, so I'm going to click here on reports on the left side, no, not reports, sorry, I'm going to click on library and then i'm going to click on this box and then i'm going to click on account type where are you in this case there's, here's my account types right so we have the balance sheet account the asset account we have all this stuff here right so i'm going to double click on uh, pnl accounts and i'm only going to choose my income account so i'm going to choose my income accounts which are the first two that are here okay and then basically once i let me just close this. Once I look at these reports, then I'm only going to see the income side of each one. Now, what's nice about these uh, pivot tables type, type of reports is that I can manually expand and collapse any of these data points. And also I can right click here and in the top and hit properties. And then I can go into, you see we have general dimensions, expressions. We're gonna go up to a presentation and we're gonna click here where it says always allow fully uh, expanded or always fully expand and we'll click okay and then I don't have to hit uh, the plus sign right then it'll, everything will be just automatically expanded now the other really, really interesting thing about working with tables like this is we can add up these numbers so I'm going to right click here on the top bar and click properties and then we're going to go into uh, we're going to have different options here so we're going to go into show partial sums okay so when i do show partial sums and i can choose at what level right at the customer level at the date level i can choose at what level at what level i want the partial sums and i hit okay and then we're going to see totals okay so it starts becoming really interesting you know versus what what quickbooks can do with reports because all of a sudden i have uh, a lot of power i can sift through tons of area of, uh, of fields inside QuickBooks. And also I can take this report and I can, I can print it just by itself, right? And I can just print the data on that report and I can choose the font size and stuff like that. Uh, in this case, let me just hit, uh, I'm gonna hit print preview and show you, obviously depending on how much data, right? Um, you know, we're gonna fail, we're gonna have to work with the formatting to, to get that to work. And then we can also export this to Excel. So we click on that little Excel button and it will send the, the raw table to Excel like this. And then you can also do some further manipulation in Excel if you wish. So this is just extremely, extremely powerful stuff. Now, one of the really exciting areas in advanced reporting is also with the columns. So right now we 
only looked at uh, rows and which are dimensions. We looked at rows and different layers of it. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on uh, the title bar, hit properties, and I'm going to click on always fully expanded, hit apply. Uh, and that way we uh, collapse uh, all these here. And then I'll just kind of, I guess, I'll, I'll pick and choose what I want to collapse and show. I just want to kind of simplify um, the, the layer, the report. So those those details are still there, but they're collapsed uh, right now for the time being. Now, what I want to show you is I'm going to right click up here on the title bar, hit properties, and then I'm gonna, going to go to dimensions again, and I'm going to add a new dimension. Uh, the new dimension is going to be a year. So I'm going to click here on the tables, and we're going to have uh, tons of tables here. And then all the way at the top, we have something called transaction date calendar. And this is a, just kind of an easy uh, date group picker here. So I'm going to click year and then click on add. So I basically added year as one more uh, dimension of information. Um, however, you know, all the way dig, dig deep into it, into that uh, fifth layer, we're going to see year in there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab year here and I'm going to drag and drop it until it looks uh, like a, like a a horizontal line instead of a vertical line and what that's going to do is it's going to now group these by by year now I can keep I can go back and collapse these um, as I wanted to and I can even collapse all the way down to the invoice level and then we see here these are the total dollar amounts invoice for year a and for year B right so I can right click here and go to properties and also change the formatting that's really important too um, so that's going to be here where it says number and then I'm going to click on money. I hit apply, and then OK. That way we're actually looking at uh, you know the dollar signs there, and that's extremely helpful stuff. So let me make these columns bigger here, so the information is clear to see. Um, and then here I can expand these, right? And I can make the, the box bigger, and then I can pick and choose which of these. I'm going to expand if I wanted to. And to go a little bit deeper into this whole thing, I'm going to right click here on the title bar, hit properties, and then I'm actually going to hide uh, these dimensions. Okay, so I'm going to hide uh, customer name, transaction date, and item for the time being. I'm not going to get rid of them, I'm just going to hide them. So I'm just going to click on each of these, click on enable conditional, and then put zero. That's just basically the way to hide them. I know not very intuitive, but that's just the way it is. So I'm gonna hide these for the time being. Just click on these and uh, put a zero there and hit apply. That way they're not uh, there anymore, not showing, but they're, they're temporarily hidden. And then I'm going to go not to the transactions table. I'm gonna go from the customer table and I'm gonna pick information about uh, the customer, right? So I'm going to pick, let's say uh, the customer's state. So we'll look down here to customer, and then we're going to look for their state. So we'll go to bill address state. There we go. And then we're going to click on add, and then we'll bring this on top of year, right? So because well, the pivot thing is not going to get all shifted. So I'm going to click on apply. And now we see in this particular case, I see all my invoices in this case by state, right? I, I kind of lost. Uh, the year now but we're gonna we're gonna get it back so i'm gonna right click here go to properties and then whenever we're dealing with both columns and rows like this we do want to go into presentation and do a uh, fully expanded it's really important um because then it, we feel that we lose that uh, you know those dimensions so right now we have um a year as a column so we're going to drag this back as a row here and then we're going to see a different way of seeing the data. So now we're seeing the years as, in this case, as rows, and then states as columns. And we can also drag states here to the to the to this side, and then we'll drag year to the top, and then we can see them in all sorts of ways. So this is like this is the real powerful things that uh, QuickBooks Advanced reporting from QuickBooks Enterprise that can be done that QuickBooks by itself cannot do. All right, here's my contact information. Visit the website. There's going to be tons of resources on advanced reporting. All the videos are going to be posted on that website. If you're doing this on your own, follow the resources. If you absolutely need somebody to do it with you or for you, 
contact me and we can discuss uh, our service to build custom reports for you. Thank you very much.